I think I've finally found the secret to creating a beautiful, realistic sunset with watercolor, and I'm excited to show you how. To start, I already have a composition sketched out on my paper, and I'm going to use my tried and true colors. I have transparent yellow, and in order to make a nice neutral orange shade, we're going to add some quinacridone red. So these are my two favorite yellow and red tones. We're gonna to mix those together and get kind of a gradient of color. So we've got our more pure yellow mixing down into our orange. I'm also gonna use ultramarine blue today, which is a pretty standard blue. It's a nice um, kind of mid-tone blue, and I'm gonna be using that for our sky, as well as mixing in with other elements um, throughout the painting. So I'm trying to mix some kind of more pure tones, so that some brighter tones, but also having, you know, I had my dirty brush with the cornacridone red and the transparent yellow already. So I have, again, a nice gradient. Now I'm going to take that perylene green, mix it with my transparent yellow again to get a much warmer uh, green tone. But I love the perylene green because I can get really deep with that. Now, like I've said before, the best way to learn to do something is to look at life. So I've been studying different sunsets and different sunrises in order to try and figure out, okay, how do I make this look realistic? And unlike my other landscape paintings in the past, I'm actually going to start at the bottom, uh, closest to the horizon. Normally I start at the top and I work my way down. This time I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm going to fade that nice orange tone up towards the top. I'm gonna to try and fade it kind of into nothing. So you can see I'm taking a clean, damp brush and I am just kind of pulling some of that pigment down, keeping it nice and saturated towards the base or towards the horizon line. Then I'm going to take some tissue and I'm just going to block out where I want the sun to be. So you can do this either by keeping it empty from the get-go, which would probably be easier, um, but I kind of like working a little bit looser, and so I'm just kind of going off the seat of my pants. Now towards closer to the base, closer to the horizon, and closer to the sun, I'm adding a little bit more red. So adding a little bit more red into our orange tone to make sure it's nice and bright. Um, I don't want it to be too bright, so you can see that my everything I'm using is watered down, because the more obnoxious it looks, the more the more saturated it looks, the more it looks kind of unrealistic. And I'm not really going for that. I want it to be soft and beautiful and show off kind of a sunset, but not look unrealistic. Now I'm going to take a large size two brush. You just really want to wet this whole section. So this is kind of an easy way to do it um, is by taking a large brush and wetting it all at once. But you can, of course, use the brush that you have already. Um, I was using a round size 10 before. And I'm just using that to kind of keep everything nice and wet. And now I'm grabbing my round brush again and we're going to dive into more of our traditional blue sky color. So I'm going in with straight ultramarine. I'll deepen it again in a second, just kind of desaturating it with some of our other colors. And I'm just swiping that across the very top and I'm allowing it to fade as it goes closer to the horizon line. If you've seen my other landscape tutorials, you've heard me say that over and over again. This shows depth and atmospheric perspective, and so it is the easiest way to show a realistic sky. Bringing in some of our sky tone, mixing it into the blue just to kind of desaturate it, give it a little bit more of a deeper tone, a little bit more of a mature color, um, just to get a more realistic vibe. So again, like I want this to look realistic. I don't want it to look kind of otherworldly. I want it to look like it could be something that you see on your drive home. So I'm blending that down, but I'm being very careful not to let the two colors mix in between. I don't want any green in my sky. And when I've looked at the photos, like some of the ones that I showed you on my phone, um, when I've studied landscapes, that's the secret I've seen is kind of having that white band in between. Now we're gonna use my tissue towel trick um, for making clouds. If you want more details on how to do that and just kind of why it seems to work really well. I'll have the video linked down below, but basically I'm taking some bath tissue or some toilet paper and I'm dabbing different areas of the sky in order to make clouds. So the biggest tip for clouds that I have is that the closer they are to the top of the page, the larger they should appear to be because again, that's closer to you. And the closer they get to the horizon line, that line in the middle, they should be smaller. Now I'm taking a little bit more of our kind of sunset tone, mixing that in with our blue to help desaturate that a little bit. 
just a touch more of our transparent yellow. See how green that is? That's not quite what I'm going for. So I'm just going to continue to mix in our primary colors until I get the shade exactly the way I want it to be. That's kind of the wonderful thing about learning color theory and knowing a little bit more about what types of colors you like to work with and really sticking with, you've noticed that um, if you've watched any of these landscape tutorials, I tend to stick with very similar colors. And it's just the more you get to know them, the better off you are as a painter. So my goal with this color was to get kind of a desaturated, slightly purpley tone, um, kind of a nice gray, but looking like a shadow. And I'm going to take that watered down and I'm dabbing it right next to the white spots that I created for my clouds. Now they're hard to see here because I wanted them to be fairly soft um, when I created them, but I'm just dabbing them kind of where the shadow would be away from the sun. So when I'm on this side where my sun is on the left, I'm going to focus my shadows kind of on the upper right because sun in the sky is kind of lower left hand side. So I'm just continuing that. Um, on each of the little clouds that I've made um, in order to stay consistent and just to show a natural shadow. So again, you'll see I don't have a ton of pigment on my brush. It's very easy to add more pigment in later. It's very difficult to pick it up. And you'll see sometimes I'll even, you know, if I pick up some color off of my palette, I'll dab it off again um, on the same palette or on the rag that you saw I just did in order to kind of soften it a little bit so it's not so pigmented. Got a little bit into my sun, decided I didn't want that, so grabbed the tissue again and just picked up some of that pigment. And some of that that I thought was getting too deep. So now with a clean, damp brush, I soften that up a little bit, adding just a touch more pigment so I don't lose what I have and then just continuing to kind of fuss with things. Now on this side of the sun, we're on the left side of the sun, so the shadow will be more on the left side of my clouds. So when it's just, that's kind of what you have to think through. It's the difficult part is in the sky, everything is kind of opposite. So when you're standing on land, everything that kind of goes up on your page should be farther away from the viewer so it gets smaller. And in the sky, it's the opposite. So everything that is getting farther away from you is actually lower and closer to the horizon line. And so that gets a little bit tricky and a little bit confusing. You kind of have to think about it and plan ahead. That's one of the reasons why I am a firm believer in kind of having a sketched out illustration. While some of this is very um, fluid and organic and I kind of make it up as I go, I found the most success comes when I have a plan. I have a you know, an image that I'm working off of a reference image, or I have things sketched out. In the end, I've just found that the best way to go about something that might be more uncomfortable for you, like for me, landscapes, um, is to kind of have a plan and do the legwork beforehand. Now, in order to brighten this landscape up a little bit, or the skyscape, so the sunset up a little bit, I'm diving back into our original color with our transparent yellow and our quinacridone red, and I'm just adding a glaze over the top. This will brighten up that color a bit. It'll be easy for me to fade it into the rest of the background because it's not a ton of pigment. and There's not a lot of water. There's not a lot being added here, but that little tiny bit will go a long way, and it'll be a great way to kind of add that punch and really brighten everything up. You'll see me do this a couple times throughout this painting process until it is as bright as I want it to be. Um, I've just found that one of the best ways to do things is to work slowly and work in glazes. Now I'm going to dive into our landscaping for this landscape. I'm taking the, par the perylene green and I'm adding it to our sky mixture. So it has a little bit more of a blue tone. And I'm just using that to dance my brush along the edge of the horizon line. So this will kind of hide the irregularities of the horizon line, but having that blue tone mixed in with our green will help it to fade into the background. Those cooler tones visually move backwards. And so we have this nice kind of background setting for our landscaping. Um, and it's just an easy way to, again, tell the story to make everything fall back a little bit into the background. Once I have that the way that I want it to be, I'm going to start diving into our kind of grass color, if you will. So again, this is the perylene green mixed with the transparent yellow. So it's a little bit warmer, a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to add that across our entire 
base. So I do have a plan for some foliage, some uh, trees, some landscaping up here. So I'm not going to be super picky with like exactly how that lays, but I am going to cover it still just so that when I apply it, if I have any negative space that I decide to place in, I don't have to fill it in later. I've just found that with grasses, especially if I know that something's going to be covering it, it's best just to fill it in and keep it all consistent and flowing together. I'm adding in a little bit of our sunset color just to kind of warm everything up. I like to repeat colors that I've used once and add them in as naturally as possible into other elements of the painting. So I thought kind of like if you had water there, adding that little bit of the color would look like it's being reflected off. So anyway, that's the thought process. Now I'm mixing some more of this grass tone, but a little bit deeper in order to, adding a little bit more water so it flows, um, in order to deepen up this area. I like to have my corners a little bit darker because it helps to naturally frame in the landscape. Um, at least that's what I've done in the past and it seems to work for me and I'm just fading that into our already wet canvas. As always, all the supplies that I'm using about, especially if there's something that I didn't mention, everything will be linked down in the description box. Um, and you can also find it on the blog post that goes with this landscape painting. So adding a little bit more red to our sky tone um, so that I can add it in. It's just a little bit deeper and it has just a little bit more movement and life to it. Um, I'm kind of working in layers. So I did one quick layer kind of placing colors where I think I like them. And if I do like them as I'm continuing to add to it, I'll continue to kind of build that up. Now I'm desaturating this green tone a little bit by adding some of the red to it, continuing to add a little bit of the yellow to it to keep it consistent. So it's not like a completely new color and I'm deepening everything because I know I have some foliage that's going to go over here. I'm creating a little bit of a shadow. Um, and making sure that that is blended in nicely. Now I'm mixing all these colors together again um, in order to create a nice deep green. We're going to add a little bit more depth to the foliage that I placed along the horizon line. I want to kind of pull it across. Now, if I were to do this again, I would work in different sections. So like this larger section that I have, I would stagger it a little bit and allow that blue that I had kind of fading in the background to live a little bit more on its own. So almost like it's another layer of another tree line, if you will, instead of just layering it on top, I knew it wasn't dark enough to, you know, hold the weight that I needed to have there, but it could have been like another layer. And I think that that would have been really beautiful. So I'm kind of bummed as I'm watching myself paint this. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, it works, it, you know, it works in the end, it looks fine, but I think it would have been kind of an added layer of beauty and depth in order to have that layering of different tree lines. So just kind of varying how the heights of the trees and almost ignoring what I had placed back there instead of trying to build up the value and kind of go on top of it, I would have created an additional tree line, if that makes sense. Um, so that's what I would have done if I could do it over again. Adding a little bit more blue here because I was just worried it was um, becoming a little bit too warm um, and losing some of that beautiful uh, cooler tone. Um, so if I could do it again, I would do that a little bit differently, um, but it works out in the end. That's the wonderful thing about art is that, you know, is, are there other ways to do things? Yes, um, but it still often works out in the end. So here I'm softening the edge. I'm just taking a damp brush with a little bit of this pigment on it and I'm softening this edge by wiping it off. So there's barely any pigment and running along. That will help it to fade in the background. Even though the color, the pigment itself is darker, I still want it to look like it's in the background. So I want to reserve any details for the foliage that I'm going to have on the right hand side. Um, that'll be more of a foreground element really more of a mid-ground. I don't really have a ton of foreground in this painting, as we shall see soon. So 
pulling things down, trying to get a good shadow going. While everything is still nice and wet. All right, now we're mixing a whole lot of green for this main foliage kind of focal point that we'll have over here. I want it nice and dark, but I still want it to have some warmth that's gonna be kind of foreground. And so I did continue to add that transparent yellow in there, but it is a lot of that praline green, nice, rich, thick pigment, thick paint, um, in order to make sure that it holds that color. If you want something to layer, to have like a really strong layer, make sure that it's not too watered down. So I have a lot of paint on my brush right now, not a ton of water, just enough to get it to move the way I want it to. And I'm working by kind of imagining that I have one branch at a time. So I'm kind of going along a branch. Let's see, there'd be some leaves here, there'd be some leaves down here, and then kind of connecting those branches with the best, the best, <laughs> the rest of the body of the tree. And then I just kind of keep building off of it. So allowing it to be a little irregular, allowing it to bounce around a little bit. And I'll fill in some of these sections later, but I want to get kind of like the main movement established before I get too overwhelmed with kind of the whole. So I'm just dancing my brush along. I found that one of the best ways to keep it really fluid and organic is to allow my brush to move kind of in an irregular way. So I'm kind of controlling the general movement, but I'm allowing it to just wiggle and have a little bit of a mind of its own. And then allowing that to kind of fade down into the rest of our landscape. Pulling in some red. We're going to start creating some shadows now. Too wet. All right. And I'm adding these shadows because if our sunset is over there on the left, this area on the right that's in more foreground, not as much in the background, is going to be a little bit more like a silhouette. Not totally a silhouette um, for the sake of this illustration, but um, it will be more silhouetted than say something that you would see during the daytime. Adding a little bit more water, dabbing it off, and then I'm going to pull that down, pull that shadow area down and kind of get it to blend in a little bit more with our landscape. And don't forget about these corners and the edges. You wanna make sure everything's blending all the way to the edge, don't have anything missing. So I'm cleaning off my brush a little bit. Um, it's still, it's kind of like a dirty, damp brush. So I just swirled it in the water a little bit, dabbed it off on the towel. I'm using this to soften the edges. Even though this, I want to have more detail and have you know like a higher hierarchy than the foliage that we had along the horizon line in the background, I still want the focal point to be that sunset. I don't want too much attention to be drawn to this area. So I'm making sure that some of it is a little bit softer and not everything is too crisp. And that will just help it to kind of flow a little bit more nicely. Um, and I'm just doing that by kind of going in with again, this damp, dirty brush and, and running it along those harsh edges just to, again, soften everything, tidy it up a little bit so that it kind of has the effect that I want it to. I want just enough crispness, but not too much. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of one of those that I feel out and you get kind of a feel based on your aesthetic for what you want it to look like. So I'm mixing up some of the red with our green that we've already mixed. And I do that so that it's not quite so harsh. Um, I just like, I like the colors mixed in and kind of added in in different places, but I don't want it to be too big of a punch. So I've just found that even if I'm mixing a complement in, adding it in just a little bit already mixed in uh, makes it less bright. You might find that you prefer to have that deep punch of color, but I, I just personally prefer it to be a little bit of a softer effect overall. 
Now I noticed that my water is dirty and since I'm gonna start diving into more of the touch-ups and the final glazes, I'm going to switch that out for some clean water. Now my youngest assistant, my youngest son, has joined me in the studio today um, for this voiceover. So you might hear a couple baby noises in the background. But for this final glaze touch-up, I'm adding the transparent yellow and see how little pigment is on that palette. It's a little dirtied with our quinacridone yellow, but I'm just taking the softest layer and I'm adding that over the sunset colors that we already have going on. Um, again, this is just to deepen it. One of my favorite tricks for brightening up and adding a little bit of saturation to any color, really, um, any analogous color, is to add some bright transparent yellow over the top. Um, just that little bit adds just an amazing punch to it. You can see the difference of the right side of the sun between, you know, between the right side of the sun and the left side. And you're gonna continue to see how that transforms it. I'm gonna keep adding just soft layer after soft layer and it gives this beautiful glow that in person is even more impressive, but it is really fun to see it come alive again, um, watching this painting. So again, you don't want a ton, so that's like way too much. So I'm just kind of pulling it out, wiping my brush off and then adding that quickly. So that's too much water. I had kind of a puddle going. So you'll see in a moment, I'll dab my brush off right there and kind of work that around. So I laid the pigment down, but I, you don't want that much water if you're just glazing over. You'll reactivate the pigment underneath, which I think I did a little bit here on this side. So you'll see I have to go in again with an additional glaze just to get that color as punchy as I want it to be. making sure that it's really blended into my sun. In order to do that, I just put it over the whole thing, took the bath tissue again, and made sure I dabbed off the very center to keep that nice and white. A little bit more in just the pure yellow. That being is my baby. And then continuing to dab. No, you can't do that. Continue to dab it and build it up along the edge. And I will actually repeat this um, off camera after everything is dried. Just so you know, I went through again and just repeated this exact same step with the transparent yellow, maybe a little bit of the quinacridone red mixed in um, just to get it as punchy as I want it to be. Working in slow, light layers is the best way to get kind of that realism added in. Now I'm going in with just a touch of our praline green that we had mixed up um, with the, no, perylene green, sorry, I know you guys love to correct me on that one. The perylene green mixture with the quinacridone red, um, I added a little bit of the blue and I'm just deepening up that line underneath our tree line in the back and just making sure that that shadow is as deep as I want it to be. That will help to push it back a little bit more visually and really ground the whole piece. So you can see that's still a little bit damp and I picked up some of the pigment. So I just tapped it back in slowly and I will mess with it later if I decide that I want to. So dabbing in some pigment in some areas that kind of became a little bit bald, if you will. And every time I pause and you can see my paintbrush hovering, it's when I am kind of leaning back in my chair and I am reevaluating. I might squint my eyes to see if the values are as dark as they need to be or just see how my eye moves around the page. And that is our finished sunset landscape. Again, I found that the trick to having a beautiful realistic sunset is to keep that kind of white band between the orangey tones and our sky tones. You've requested a sunset landscape many times before and I've been too afraid to deliver in watercolor, but I'm glad that you finally pushed me to it and we were able to give it a shot. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you have any requests for other videos, be it landscape or otherwise, I'd love to hear about that in the comment section down below. And until next time, happy painting.